It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you, so Let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Hi, friends. My name is Emily Dorman, and today I'm going to be talking a little about Fred Rogers, his life, his show, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, and how it has all affected how people communicate with children in society today. I'm even wearing his signature sweater. So, let's go ahead and get started with a little bit of background information about Mr. Rogers' life. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. Fred Rogers, most commonly known as Mr. Rogers, was alive from 1928 to 2003. Later in his life, he attended Dartmouth College for a year, then transferred to Rollins College for school. He graduated college in 1951 with a degree in music composition. His television career started with him being an NBC assistant for a music program in New York. Later, in 1953, he was hired at the first community-supported TV station called WQED. The next year, he was a co-producer for a show called The Children's Corner. This show helped him experiment and discover his love of puppets, the same ones he liked as a kid. The first time he officially became the TV Mr. Rogers was on a Canadian show called Mr. Rogers. This laid out the foundation for his main and more iconic show, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. As he became more popular, he got a divinity degree and his church asked him to help families through television. Fred and his wife Joanne didn't want to raise their family in Canada, so they moved back to Pittsburgh where Rogers created his show, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, in 1966. The show finally premiered on PBS two years later in 1968. He communicated with children on navigating new emotions, growing up, and making friends. Not only that, but in serious times, he helped kids cope and understand the importance of equality and acceptance. He believed that kids could be exposed to all types of real-world problems as long as it was communicated properly. He used puppets, music, a diverse cast, and dialogue to help kids understand the world. After the show premiered, right away, Mr. Rogers started sending messages to kids all over the world. One of the main ones being that emotions were normal to feel and healthy ways of coping with them. One of the ways that he did this was using a puppet named Daniel Striped Tiger. Daniel Striped Tiger used to get really sad and really angry on the show. And Mr. Rogers used to tell him that everything was going to be okay and he taught him different ways of coping with his feelings. I think you are just fine exactly the way you are. The way I look? Yes. The way I talk? <laughs> yes. The way I love? Especially that. You don't think I'm a mistake? Time and time again, Mr. Rogers showed just how much he cared for each and every kid. He acknowledged that their emotions were valid, even though they were young. What do you do with the mad that you feel when you feel so mad you could fight? When the whole wide world seems oh so wrong And nothing you do seems very right What do you do? Do you punch a bag? Do you pound some clay or some dough? Do you round up friends for a game of tag? Or see how fast you go? Speaking of puppets, Mr. Rogers had a lot of puppets that he used throughout the show. Some people even thought he was obsessed with them, but they were great because each puppet had a certain message that they sent out to the viewers. 
You can make believe it happens or pretend that something's true. You can wish or hope or contemplate a thing you'd like to do. But until you start to do it, you will never see it through. Cause the make-believe pretending just won't do it for you. Not only did Mr. Rogers feature a lot of puppets on the show, but he also featured lots of people. One of the main aspects that set Mr. Rogers' neighborhood apart from other TV at the time was the diverse cast. I like someone, do you know who? Yes, I like someone who looks like you. I like someone, do you know who? Yes, I like someone who talks like and looks like you. I like someone, do you know who? Yes, I like someone who walks like and talks like and looks like you. At the time of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, the black community often faced discrimination and violence. In the 60s, people would dump cleaning chemicals into swimming pools in an attempt to harm black people swimming. Mr. Rogers worked to address this issue, encouraging his audience to look beyond the color of someone's skin. This is going to turn into a beautiful day. Mr. Rogers spoke out to ensure that all kids watching understood that every person is special and worthy of love, regardless of their race, gender, emotions, or abilities. It's not the things you wear, it's not the way you do your hair, but it's you I like. The way you are right now, the way down deep inside you. Not the things that hide you. Not your fancy chair. <laughs> That's just beside you. But it's you I like. Mr. Rogers sent out so many amazing messages to the world. But the one that he cared about the most, and the one that was most important to him, was for every kid to know that they were important and loved. At the end of every episode, he would tell them how much he cared about them and how much he loved them. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I hope that you're as proud as I am proud of you. I'm proud of you. I hope that you are. Today, Mr. Rogers' legacy lives on with his viewers, society, and even current television. It's Daniel Tiger's neighborhood, a land of make Kids and adults everywhere continue to be inspired by the lessons taught by Mr. Rogers. It is extremely important that we continue to live by Mr. Rogers' example, educating our youth on the worldly topics of today. That's the end of my documentary and today's episode. So I guess all that's left to say is, won't you be my neighbor? You're growing inside and when you wake up, ready to say, I think I'll make a snappy new day. It's such a good feeling, a very good feeling. The feeling you know that I'll be back when the week is new. And I'll have more ideas for you. And you'll have things you'll want to talk about. I will too. You always make it a special day and a special week. I'll be back next time. Bye. Are you going somewhere today? If you are, is it somewhere you've been before or someplace new? Will you be visiting with old friends or new friends? I hope wherever you are or wherever you're going, you will have a very special day.